Hi, Ananda. Hello. Hello. Chingachai. Hi. Hi, Deng. I hope it stopped raining. Yes, it's not raining today. Okay, great. Hi, Luis. Hi, Ananda. How are you doing? Nice Good. to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good afternoon, evening, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's just give it another two more minutes as we traditionally do. Thank you.
Okay, good morning, afternoon and evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third and final day of the MAG meeting, um, our second set of open consultations and MAG meeting. Uh, just to start, the usual, the meeting is being recorded um, and also transcribed. A summary report will be made available next week. Um, uh, this is also being live streamed at YouTube and also please make sure that your microphone is off at all times unless you are speaking. Um, for, in order to request um, a slot to make an intervention, please use the speaking queue. If you're unable to use the speaking queue, you can put your name in the chat and then somebody from the secretary will put your name in the speaking queue and you can easily see where you are in the queue um, by either looking at it displayed in Zoom or you can go to the front page of the IGF um, website. When it's your turn to speak, the chair will call your name. And um, once she's called your name, could you please um, state your name and the, your affiliation or the institution that you work for. Um, please keep your interventions short because there's a lot of people who want to make interventions and we are trying to keep time. Um, also, please, could you speak in a measured um, pace, uh, not too fast, not too slow, so that people can understand you better and the transcribers can also write down what you're saying um, better. Um, once you're finished speaking, can you please switch off your microphone? Um, that's so that we don't disturb any other people. Um, the agenda is on the front page and we're following it. There's been, I, I think, no changes today, I think, um, but the chair will go through that um, uh, when she opens the meeting. Um, with that, let me hand over the floor to Henriette Esther Austin, who is our chair, uh, to start the meeting. Thank you very much, um, Shangatai. Henriette here, Henriette Esterhuizen from Johannesburg. Happy to report that it's a bit warmer today. So welcome to all our MAG members. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to our captioners um, and to all our observers. I'm happy to see that some have faded, but we still have quite a few of our loyal observers with us um, today. Thank you for your commitment and your interest. Um, and thanks to all the MAG members um, who worked hard on the groups that took place um, late yesterday or early today, depending on your time zone. So today we don't have any changes to the agenda and I, I trust that we will be able to keep time. I don't think we should feel under pressure to, to produce more decisions other than what we have set for ourselves to decide today. Um, for the first um, half hour, hour and a half of the meeting, and we've allocated quite a substantial uh, um, uh, amount of time, um, we want to finalize the discussion on main sessions. So we'll start with the report from the breakouts group, breakout groups, and then we'll um, have further discussion on that. And then we'll agree on basic concrete next steps for taking main session um, decisions forward. Then we'll have a break after that. And we really must have this short break today. It's 15 minutes, uh, we could make it shorter. And um, you could talk about work issues, but I also thought you might want to just reflect on the meeting. Um, I just looked at Shangatai and I noticed he isn't wearing a tie. So I was, you know, one of the things that, you know, we maybe can talk about is what our dress code has been for this virtual meeting. I know that for me, I've actually dressed up and I hate dressing up, but I have made an effort to, to dress up um, for this virtual meeting. Um, and then after the short break, which, we can, which will be randomly assigned and we can use it as we want, we can use it for informal social interaction, or we can use it to discuss issues of concern. Um, then we go into our final plenary and that will really just be a summation. We'll, we'll recap what we've achieved and what we still need to do to plan for a virtual IGF. If you have some more proposals at that time about how to approach the design of a virtual IGF, we can discuss those. But we don't need to make a decision.
decision. We want to give ourselves a little bit more time to reflect and possibly also to get feedback from, from the community before we finalize the, the design. Um, and that is it. We will set the time for our next call. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Secretariat has prepared a revised timeline for us so that we can look at this timeline visually in front of us to give us a sense of the work ahead. So on that note, I'd like to hand over to the, to the groups um, to, to give us um, their, their reports. And um, today, can we start with, yesterday we started with data, so today can we start with trust, please? Trust, not trust, sorry, I'm, I, I'm getting completely confused. Um, Anya, are you with me? You've got the breakout list in front of you. Can I ask you to call the first breakout? Or if you can put it on screen. Yes, hi, Andrea, to everyone. Just give me a second and Good. we're putting it on screen. Good. I'll just give it to Lois to share. While Anya brings the, the breakout list on screen, did it work for you? Just give some random reactions. Just take the mic and talk. Did these breakout groups that were um, assigned to, to different time slots, how did that work? Was it successful? It, it was really comfortable and it worked well, you know, so that uh, we had a comfortable time. That's good, Ananda. You had yours this morning, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. It was quarter you know to ten. So and the group from the Americas, how did yours work out? Um, it's Yuta speaking here. It was a second group where we had the Americans with us. Uh, so for them, it, I think it was quite convenient for uh, Paul and me being late in the evening, uh, about 10 o'clock in the evening. Yes, it went. <laughs> it went okay. <laughs> Hi, I agree with Yuta. It, it was quite convenient for me as well. So it was a bit late for the, the, the Central European, Central African time people, but, but good for the rest of you. Okay, thanks very much, Anya, for helping with this. So um, can we start with group one? That is the group that was facilitated by Roberto and Tamea sent in the report. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good morning, good, everyone. good afternoon, good night to everyone. Um, Yes, we we were working in the, the first group. Actually, we also have the the help of uh, Taimia that had uh, did a very good job of putting all the discussion together and re re reflecting in one document, the document that we sent with you and shared. As you will see, I will go to some of the conclusions that we have in the meeting regarding first to the format and. Uh, numbers of sessions uh, we are keeping below eight uh, not counting opening and closing sessions for the thematic tracks um, main session should be timed between 90 and 120 minutes main session should stand uh, out from the program and that other se session uh, and should run in parallel the mag uh, should have some responsibility of choosing topic of approving content and speakers for, for as well as organizing the main, main sessions. Um, there was general support in the group that there should be a main session per track. If MAC members can come up with uh, relevant and timely ideas then complement the discussion in workshops and other sessions pertinent to the track, analyze and this is should each organize their main session as long as it brings together their views on chosen topics. Um, some creative ideas, NRIs or DCs could explore per sessions or satellite events over different regions, <clears throat> time zones or interest groups to get input from on, and build momentum for their session. About the opening and closing session for thematic trucks, this is uh, something interested, interesting that, that uh, came out from the group. Um, this opening and closing session work at fine together uh, during the last year and we should keep it, them but uh, maybe made some adjustment organizing particularly the, 
the open session because uh, we could this time we could ask uh, the people to prepare some uh, I mean the we could prepare some videos some introductory videos regarding the issues that are going to be discussed in each of the thematic tracks and uh, that's one of the the things that we discussed the the other uh, the other important thing that we could do about the about the closing session is that it will work fine again as I, uh, receiving feedback from the attendees and also to evaluate uh, the overall sessions that we had during the, the discussions and uh, one other thing that we mentioned is that we could take advantage of the functionalities that uh, the Zoom have regarding evaluations that as, as we did during the last uh, days. Um, about the main uh, session topics, um, proposal of having one main session per track was uh, supported of having these uh, four main sessions re regarding to, uh, to each of the tracks. And in, in uh, case of the data track, um, the idea that was proposed by, by the data evaluation, evaluation group was to convert in a workshop to 229 uh, into a main session. Uh, while the group agreed, this is a good topic to discuss, the majority of those on the call raised concerns about conflicting workshop selection and main session selection process and advised that the workshop be retained as a workshop. By the idea further explored a main session as well with um, HL speakers and diversity ensuring MAG organizers. Another potential idea was mentioned for a main session on data that could explore the topic of data protection in emergency situations such as COVID-19. Um, about the environment, the group supported the idea of having a main session for the track and looks forward to discussing a concrete proposals because so far we don't have any, I mean, the, the group didn't have uh, identified any, any particular one. Uh, some noted that the proposal on definite committed actions for connecting and enabling the remaining medium will fit well under this track uh, regarding, the, regarding the, the inclusion track. And uh, finally, regarding trust, the group supported the idea of having a main session for the track and looks forward to discussing a concrete proposal. Proposals for session and definitive and committed actions for connecting and enabling the next million. The group agreed that the session should be on the program, but noted that MAC members' interest in the topic should still be allowed time to review and contribute the session, the policy questions, and speaker selection. Um, about the proposal on the IGF Plus related aspects of the UN uh, Sustainable Goals Roadmap for Digital Cooperation, the Group agreed there should be plenary session to discuss this with the community instead of formal response from MAC to the secretary about the roadmap. The group noted that the session should also discuss uh, the option paper that is to be released uh, later this summer. About the framework for the internet can help address emerging, the emerging issues that was presented for ISOC, the group agreed that this is an interesting topic for the IGF, but perhaps there's, this is not the, the, the right format. So um, we are willing to speak and maybe some other members of MAC could speak uh, and maybe analyze what will be uh, the best approach, the best format for this proposal. Um, the proposal on, on, from a high level session on COVID-19 uh, related topic, the group uh, took notes on this proposal and there, there was some support for the session on this topic. Group members also noted the synergy between the proposals and support by the UNDES and the proposal from Dynamic Coalition. Um, about this creative idea, some in the group expressed that support for including two or three short pre-recording intervention in a, about three minutes from relevant individuals usually not attending IGF answering uh, a specific question to be addressed in the main session as a key started or send setter. That's the report uh, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Maybe someone of the group would like to perhaps add something else?
I see Nebosha has his hand up, but does anyone else from, from, from group one want to say anything? I don't see any hands or anyone. I cannot see the speaker's queue, um, but I trust that Luis will let me know. I don't see any hands. So thank you very much for that report, Group 1, and, and for your work. I have one comment that I wanted to make, but let me hear from Nebosha first. Um, hello. It's just one, one uh, formal uh, remark when it comes to the terminology. Uh, just to, to not confuse the uh, introductory and concluding session with opening and closing session. So I noticed that in uh, this report from group one, uh, they use uh, opening and closing session, uh, which might cause a little bit of confusion on, on, without going into details uh, about uh, which uh, session uh, we are talking about. So my suggestion is to keep this terminology opening and closing session for really opening and closing of whole IGF uh, and uh, introductory and concluding session uh, for the sessions that will uh, uh, start and uh, finish uh, thematic tracks. So that's just my small, small objection, not uh, just for group one, but uh, for uh, all of us uh, for the future reference. Thank you. Thanks, Nebosha. That's a very useful clarification. So what we are talking about here are not the overall IGF opening and closing sessions. And those ones will come to at a later stage. As the UN is in effect the, the host of the IGF this year, we'll be working with, with UNDESA um, um, and hopefully other UN agencies on organizing that. So that's a helpful clarification. Um, um, what we are talking about here are the introductory and concluding sessions for the thematic tracks. So thanks for that clarification. Yeah. Um, thanks for this group. The only thing I wanted to comment on in your report is about the using a workshop as a main session. That's actually happened before. You know, there's, there's because I mean, the, the, firstly, the MAG doesn't have any hard and fast rules every mag develops its own practice and procedure um, and you know and at this year i think we have a mag with with many long-term uh, third-term members and new members so maybe that's why we we have the benefit of a lot of practice that has evolved um, over the the three-year term of those who've been around but it's happened before that workshops have um being co-organized with MAG members to become main sessions. I think what's important is that the workshop organizers understand that they have to work with MAG um, if their workshop is going to be changed from a workshop to, to a main session. Um, so, you know, I, we can listen to the other group reports, but there's nothing in principle to prevent a, a workshop from, from being um, converted to a main session, provided it meets the MAG's criteria and the organizers are willing to work under MAG leadership or you know, closely with MAG members um, to, to take that idea and then organize it as a main session. And in fact, I went to look um, um, last night at that workshop, workshop proposal. And I'm not sure who proposed it, but it's got very high level speakers. And if I look at the content of that workshop proposal, that, that data track proposed uh, as a main session, I actually think it's very suited as a main session. And um, so, I, I, I mean, we still have to discuss this and I want to see what the other groups say, but just in principle, um, I think what is important is that main sessions are organized um, by MAG members with the leadership of MAG members. Um, but there's nothing, you know, in our history or our practice to prevent us from working with workshop proponents to turn it into a main session. Shengatai, can you just clarify, or you want to add anything on that, just so that we all know what the parameters are? No, you're quite uh, correct. Um, there's no rules as such. You know, there's no hard and fast rules. Um, each mag each year can adjust the operating procedures as they see fit, uh, you know, for the formation of the um, main sessions. Um, 
in the past years, we have had non-MAG members, um, people from the community helping with the uh, main session. So that's quite correct. Thanks, Shengatai. I think what's really important is that, you know, we, and I think this is what you, the place that you are coming from, that main sessions are organized by the MAG and the MAG feel a sense of accountability for the quality of those main sessions. But it's common practice for, for MAG to work with non-MAG members um, on organizing main sessions. But let's hear what the other groups have to say. So thanks very much, group one. Let's hear from group two. That's uh, Paul Rowney and Jutta, and um, working with Ben and Jennifer as rapporteurs. You have the floor. Hi, it's Jutta speaking here. Uh, Jutta Kroll, MAC member in my third year representing civil society. I'm from Germany. I do think I hand directly over to Jen because she has uh, prepared the document uh, and we've working uh, as we said before last evening on, the, on that. So Jen, uh, would you like to go ahead, please? Thank you, Yuta, and thank you, Chair. Uh, Jennifer Chung, third year MAG member, private sector, also the co-rapporteur for, um, for group two. First, I wanted to thank the entire group two for a really fulsome and engaging discussion, especially thanks to Yuta and Paul for their excellent um, facilitation and also Ben, of course, for assisting throughout for uh, preparing the report and, and being a co-rapporteur. So we started off um, group two with talking a little bit about the impact of the virtual IGF on the main, schedule, main session scheduling. Uh, we thought we had to start with that because we can't really look at numbers without looking at the impact of changing the format from physical to, to virtual. Um, we discussed that it was probably ideal for us to have one a day, but no more than two per day. We didn't discuss a concrete number, but this is kind of the guideline that group two rallied around. Um, the format we wanted to have it standalone, meaning we don't want it to clash with any other sessions, any other uh, open fora, any other uh, workshop sessions uh, and such. The length was also discussed. We had group members who mentioned it was, you know, last year in, in Berlin, it was good to have a two hour session, but others did say that because now we're not looking at a physical meeting, we're looking at a virtual meeting, people's um, attention span may, may waver. So our final recommendation would be anywhere from 90 to 20, uh, 120 minutes. So anywhere from one hour and a half to two hours. The time zone we briefly talked about, I think uh, this also depends on the discussion afterwards, but there was some general comments about having it in UTC time zone or the quote unquote backbone time zone that was uh, brought up in the mag mailing list. So moving on to the second part of the report, the main session topics. Um, we took um, a presumption that there were three of the sessions that were guaranteed a main slot. Uh, the first one is the proposal submitted by Roberto and Karim, the definitive um, committed actions for connecting and enabling the remaining billions. Um, we discussed that it could be viewed as an inclusion main session. Um, I do note that we, we haven't really concluded like group one that we wanted a main session per track, but I think the conversation around most of our discussions did, you know, lead to general uh, general support for this. The second, um, so, uh, the second session that we, we supported was the role of the internet in emergency situations by the NRIs, and we also supported the DC sessions. Um, there is some extra notes here, uh, especially from um, um, our, our DC extraordinaire, Yuta, mentioning that the DCs will be sending uh, um, their planning uh, documents forward to the MAG to discuss further. So we've separated the remaining topics into three sections. The first one is general support. The second one is no consensus. And then the last one is no support. For the general support session, we have the um, digital cooperation proposal. There is support for a main session on the digital cooperation architecture elements. Um, for example, the IGF plus of the roadmap on digital cor uh, cor corporation. Um, the second general supported um, 
main session would be on environment. Um, there was some preliminary discussion um, to look at it as a standalone and others also mentioned that they might want broader elements brought in such as sustainable development. For the workshop uh, 229, uh, changing times for data governance, there was suggestions that just like we did for the content governance main session from last year, this proposal can be used as inspiration and a basis for a main session to be created and organized by MAG members. Um, there were concerns that this might mean a highly rated workshop will not end up being used in its proposed form. And there were some solutions proposed that the MAG to invite the proposers of 229 to be part of the group that takes responsibility for organizing this main session. Moving on to the no consensus parts, um, we talked a little bit about the emerging issues ISOC proposal. Uh, group two members mentioned that we probably will need further discussion and it would need more focus and it could be taken up in a different format or modality or the elements of this proposal could be considered for a MAG driven emerging issues main session. So part of um, what we discussed was in our group, we actually brought up uh, a good suggestion um, suggesting that we leave space for an emerging issue main session. But um, this would probably require us to identify and agree to the topic by late August because there would be um, inviting speakers and other logistic items that we have to consider as well. The last part is the no support. Um, not that we don't support um, sessions on COVID-19 or the pandemic, but we noted that these have already been identified as topics uh, from the NRIs, the DCs, different workshops, and most likely in the high-level sessions that we heard uh, very briefly from Wyman yesterday. So we don't really support yet another standalone session on COVID-19. On the introductory and concluding sessions, um, we are hoping that uh, they should be treated as the opening sessions in so far as we don't have this clash with other sessions as well. Um, since last year, it was really used for people as a capacity building uh, component. Um, we thought this was probably best and it could even be done in advance of the, the, the main IGF. For the concluding session or sessions, uh, we noted that it could form part of the closing plenary and or a separate section uh, session before the closing plenary to serve as a forum to capture the feedback. Um, on the discussion on opening and closing plenaries, um, there was a good suggestion that these would probably be organized as webinars, given that we will have quite a large number of participation. Um, but it was also noted that there might be challenges enabling the open mic uh, for comments at the end of plenaries, and this is considered as a very important part and important instrument for community engagement at the IGF. Luis, if we can scroll down, thank you. Um, we identified some next steps for the planning. Um, echoing what our chair mentioned yesterday, we did feel that their working groups need to be established for each main session as was done in previous years, uh, not including the NRI and DC main sessions because uh, those two groups already are quite, uh, quite advanced in planning and I'm sure they would be very happy to involve the MAG as well um, once they have something a little more, um, more developed. And another note was that main session working groups should be volunteer based with MAG members able to sign up and contribute to one or more of their choices so that we're not locked in our uh, evaluation okay, groups, per se. Yeah. So um, that's the report. Uh, Yuta, Paul, Ben, and the rest of group two, please feel free to jump in if I've missed anything. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jennifer, um, for that report and to everyone also who were in that group and who helped with that. Does anyone want to add to Jennifer's report? Anyone from that group? Hi, it's Jutta speaking here. Since I have not seen whether um, Hannah is with us today, I would like just to um, repeat that she suggested not only to reduce uh, the main sessions to uh, one hour on 
uh, 90 minutes, uh, so, sorry, to 90 minutes. She proposed as well to reduce the duration of all workshop sessions to 60 minutes. I do think that's a um, point that needs to be kept in mind when we discuss uh, the format of a virtual IGF, whether we uh, can have a consensus on the reduction of duration uh, in this regard. Thank you. Thanks for that, Jutta. I see Hannah is with us. Hannah, did you want to speak to that? Thanks so much, uh, Ariadne, and thanks, Jutta. Um, I, I, I didn't want to, to disrupt at all. I just thought that this was something uh, that a, a few people have been saying in terms of the, the ability to keep kind of a concise schedule and it's, it's not um, to, to be able to keep uh, attention sometimes online requires a more concise schedule. Um, so, so yeah, not to prolong that, but it was just a, a point that I did uh, want, want to flag and I think that it could be considered. Um, I think that, that Ben was also in support of um, looking at, at 90 minutes for main sessions um, and, and I'm very happy to hear uh, other suggestions. If people have seen longer sessions that have managed to remain engaging, um, that would be good to know, but uh, I, I personally haven't. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Hannah. It's a good point. We need to come back to that. I mean, I've got experiences of longer sessions that have worked very well. Uh, the, the Michon's public consultations, for example. But it depends. It depends on how you facilitate them and whether you use breakouts or breaks. But so we, we, we definitely need to give this serious thought. We don't have to conclude on that today. But it's good that you've tabled the issue of duration. Nebosha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, first, when it comes to the uh, reducing all workshops to uh, 60 minutes, I'm uh, against that. As uh, uh, when we evaluated the, the workshop proposals, we took in account the uh, proposed format and uh, in uh, uh, evaluating uh, the quality of the whole proposal, uh, how the format fitted the, the content policy issues and uh, uh, in that sense, uh, we also uh, gave our uh, uh, marks. Uh, if we now force uh, some uh, of, the, of the proposals to be reduced to 60 minutes, I think it will uh, influence uh, the, the quality of workshop proposals and uh, uh, possibly if we knew that the, 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 the proposed uh, 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 duration was 60 minutes, we would uh, maybe give the, the smaller uh, marks. When it comes to the main uh, session's duration, uh, I think uh, it will be mentioned when we come to the group four. Um, I think that uh, uh, two hours is, is the minimum, uh, as we are already now almost 40 minutes in, the, in this uh, discussion and uh, we are only warming up. Uh, today we, we, we had discussion uh, that lasted uh, longer than uh, one hour and uh, we were just simply uh, discussing about the main sessions. So uh, I don't think 90 minutes uh, would work and uh, I propose that uh, we remain with um, minimum uh, or in my opinion optimum of uh, two hours. Thank you. Um. I'm actually inclined to agree with Nebosha, but I, but you know, but I'm the chair. It's not my decision. I just think we shouldn't we shouldn't pressure. You know, people will be under quite a lot of pressure in organising their sessions as virtual sessions. So I, you know, I think we should be cautious about putting additional pressure on them to reduce the time, particularly as we have this very exciting opportunity to make the IGF more inclusive. But we'll get to that later. So I don't see any other questions. So shall we go to group three? Um, that's the group that was facilitated by Juliana um, working with Mary Rose. Group three, are you ready to report? Or did I miss someone? I'm so sorry. And June and Hannah, you, you've requested the floor. Hello, June, I, uh, hello. Thank you, Chair. June Paris, uh, MAG member. Uh, I just wanted to add to what Hannah suggested. 
I'm thinking that yes, we could reduce the time of the workshops because we're going to be virtual, which means there's less preparation time for speakers to sit down and you know get every, the room ready. So I think we could reduce it by at least 15 minutes. Thanks, June. Good point. And Hannah, do you want to come back on this? Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, and, and thanks, June. That, that's precisely what, what I was going to raise, uh, but mainly on the format. So when, when I was evaluating the format, in, and I can only speak for myself, I mean, it was bearing in mind that these would be in-person sessions. Um, so I don't think it's unreasonable to, to reconsider what would be an engaging session online. Um, on the contrary, I think that when you have less time, even as a speaker, you spend more time getting getting to the point of what you would like to contribute to the discussion. Um, and I think that that you know our sessions are not scripted, but um, you know the, the the workshop sessions presumably you'd be asking the speakers to to share um, the wealth with with less protocol, and that's one of the the opportunities uh, of of uh, having digital sessions. Um, However, as I said, uh, you know, not to prolong, and uh, it's, it's just an idea and, and appreciate it. Thanks, Hannah. Yes, you know, it is a good idea. I think what might also make a difference on this is how we decide to deal with the, the networking component of the virtual IGF. You know, do we rely on breakout sessions uh, in workshops? to create a networking um, um, dimension? Or do we organize other um, um, features that will enable the networking? So I think that that might also make a difference. If we have other um, features that enables you know, networking, hanging out and meeting in corridors, then we don't really, then we can have very concise workshops. Or if we want to ask workshops to build in little breaks, but, but, but we need to, you know, these are the decisions we have to make in the next two weeks. So the speaking queue is now empty. Um, um, and let's go on to group three for your report. Juliana. Juliana and Mary Rose. Hi, Madam Chair. Thank you. This is Mary Rose of Yanga, second year in the MAG, representing the private sector and then from the Philippines for the record. So I'll be sharing to you the output of group three and with regards to how we work this, it's really convenient that we are all in Asia Pacific region. So the time zone was really convenient for us. And I think we had a productive um, discussion about this. So I'll just wait for Secretary to pull up, pull out my, the document for everyone to see. All right. So we started with um, discussing about the, the proposals for the main session and Based on that, we added two other additional columns to identify at least which thematic track it belongs. So we identified some of them and then um, for, con for convenience, um, for, on our remarks, we added another column for our group remarks. So from that, um, the, the workshop proposal that was suggested by Rubero and Karim on definitive committed actions for connecting and remaining billions, we support that. And we thought that it, it belongs to the inclusion track, but um, we have a general suggestion that the title can be changed to include a business model so that it will be um, more explicit on what this session is all about. And then for the um, digital corporate cooperation and digital roadmap session, um, we also have, we also provide give our support to this main session. And as long as there is an inclusion of the MAG in the panel, so that's a strong recommendation from our group. And then we also um, discuss a little bit about the, the recommendation from the ISOC on emerging issues. And the group generally thought that we need more information on this or if we can provide uh, the proposal and then later on, we can decide if, if, if this session is really for the main session or for an open forum. So um, we don't have a decision on whether we can support this for the main, main session or not yet. And of course, for the, um, we have the full support for the NRI main session, and we trust that they do a great job on this as usual. 
and for a for the thematic track on data um, we know that there's a workshop proposal on number two to nine a change in times for data governance um, yes we support this workshop session um, to be included in the main session um, we just want to have a if anybody from the mag member who are going to coordinate this should communicate well with the workshop proposers and develop the speakers and scope of the session so if it will be okay for the proposers then um, we support this one as part of the main session and of course we need one session for the environment track and although we don't have the proposal for this one yet but there's a general suggestion from the group to if they can um, have a session that would present data on climate change or misinformation that would be great that's just uh, some of the suggestions from our group for the environment main session and then for the trust um, yes we support this one and we would let um, the working group for the trust to decide which topic to choose as the main session and for the dcs um, yeah we we believe that they can come up with something um, to be the focus of the topic in the main session. But we strongly suggest that there will be a coordination, close coordination with the UN DESA to, and the Secretariat to, to avoid repetition with the high level leaders meeting organized by UN DESA. And in terms of the numbers of the main session, um, we thought that it would um, not more than 10, 10, 10 main sessions. And we also are wondering if there is any submission from the BPFs for the main session and um, it may, could be added to the list. And in terms of the format and the length, um, we thought that it should not be more than two hours. And I think um, other groups has also recommended that one. And if you can scroll down for the next part. So we also discussed about, yeah, the impact of the virtual IGF on the main session. Again, um, we see that two hours fit for the main, main session and the speakers, we don't uh, put any limit to the speakers as long as the organizers, and it will be part of the guideline that the organizer, organizer should put an effort on the diversity of the panel as much as possible and as humanly as possible. And for the format, um, we, we do not recommend a one format for the main session because it might depend on the platform that the Secretariat will use. If they will use, um, they will use Zoom, then, it's, then the breakout groups is possible for the main session. And so for the next step on main session preparation, um, um, we think that there's a, you should list the possible themes for the main session and identify the MAD members who would volunteer to organize and facilitate just like um, last year. So moving on to the introductory and concluding sessions, um, we also thought that it can be done um, same as last year for the introductory um, based on theme, uh, thematic tracks, and then the concluding session as a wrap up and a comment for each track. So I think, um, the, the MAG members should, again, divide ourselves into based on the thematic tracks for the introductory and concluding sessions. And we also um, had a discussion on what would be the format of the virtual IGF. Um, if you can scroll down a little bit. So there are, we see that there are some, there are, there are advantages for the virtual IGF, of course. There's no location constraints and then speaker and we can, um, speakers and participants could join from anywhere and the only constraints that we think is that of course the timing and the time zone um, we thought that if we use central time zone there might be participants that cannot join especially from asia and if possible there would be a distribute uh, distribution of sessions on three time zones so that at least three or two sessions for each track um, that's an example and then um, there are concerns and questions that has been raised that we cannot um, answer yet. So how many virtual rooms uh, dedicated for each track? Are there any virtual rooms dedicated for each track or main session? And also what are the social media platforms to be used? And 
And with regards to security, um, is there any security team standby um, to take care of the cybersecurity issues? And the last thing is that um, this one, we would ask if, how's the newcomer session? Is it happening? And we suggest that it would, yes, but there should be a close coordination with the MAG and the secretariats on the plan so that the, what happened last year will not happen again. And um, there was a suggestion if possible, we can ask the internet governance schools or the academies to be the organizers of the newcomers session. Um, so that's from group three and I will pass on to my other key members, um, Juliana, Silvia, Yana, if they have to add, there's something they want to add. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks a lot for that, Mary Rose. Um, do you want to add, um, Juliana, or anyone else? Uh, thank you, this is Juliana uh, from Indonesia, MAC member, second years from civil society. Uh, actually, I don't have any uh, urgent thing to add, but uh, for the speakers, this is, this is coming uh, on my mind when i preparing the initial reporting. Be, be, because the, this is virtual and will be uh, there is maybe there is some suggestion to limit the speakers but it it, uh, it is come suggest uh, uh, the, uh, the group agree is this no there is no, no need limitation for the speaker as long as the the group can have the strong moderator because the main session need to explore many things many aspects so it's, it's, it it will be uh another burden for the organized my session if we put limitation on the speakers i think it's only that thank you rose for the Thanks, thank Juliana. you go ahead thanks very much to 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 that group and to juliana and mary rose does anyone have any questions for for this group and um, thanks for, to this group for going into a little bit more depth about the virtual IGF. We will summarize all of this input, um, as well as the input on virtual IGF that's being shared in the list. So all of this is going to be used and all the discussion as well. If there are no questions for group three, can we please uh, have the report from group four? That's the group facilitated by Helani, working with Natasha and Chennai as rapporteurs. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Natasha. I'm coming from Zagreb, and uh, I'm a MAG member for third term. And uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Helani and Chennai for taking over the role of facilitator and rapporteur for this, for our group. And since Chennai is uh, at the meeting at the moment, I will uh, present uh, conclusions of our group. So uh, uh, for the number of main sessions, uh, we, uh, we would like to have a, a clarification of the uh, best practice forums and ISOC proposal. Uh, uh, and to see whether they impact on the numbers and the scheduling of the program. Uh, so uh, uh, we would like to uh, uh, determine the influence of the thematic tracks on the main session. Uh, should we have a main session determined by thematic tracks? In fact, we are in favor of that idea to have thematic to have main sessions that would reflect thematic uh, tracks of the of the uh, program. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, the value of uh, those thematic track main sessions would, uh, uh, would advantage uh, access to interpretation, which would allow uh, for the diversity in participation and uh, uh, provide the overview of the main, main tracks. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, uh, we would propose uh, to design uh, uh, main sessions in a way to enhance the uh, interactivity through breakout groups, uh, which would combine topping and tailing part. Uh, and uh, uh, that topping and tailing were meant to support or replace the beginners or newcomer session. 
uh, and uh, had that breakout uh, part value. Uh, we would uh, support uh, for working on uh, a, synch a synch asynchronous approach, uh, enabling uh, as much as, uh, as needed offline approach to following the information uh, that is being done uh, and uh, uh, um, <clears throat> We have a tailing sessions to conclude and uh, has been covered in thematic track. Uh, so uh, there's something that I hope Mary will come in afterwards or immediately if she would like to. Uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, she uh, emphasized during the discussion that we still need newcomers in session and that it's important to, to stay. Uh, uh, concerning the topics for the main sessions, uh, as, as I said, uh, we uh, support having the uh, thematic tracks uh, covered by the main sessions. Uh, concerning Roberto and Karim's proposals, maybe it could be a good candidate for the representing the inclusion uh, track, but of course it uh, should uh, firstly be uh, discussed inside the inclusion group. Uh, to decide whether uh, this represents uh, uh, the opinion of and, and the whole whole track of inclusion, uh, and should it be presented that, that way as a representative of this track, or, uh, or considered that as, as a stop standalone uh, main session uh, uh, candidate. Uh, uh, there, we concluded that there is a need for more context on this session and content as well, as it may be focused more on business models and the need to stand alone rather than to link to the uh, emerging issues panel. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we think that uh, for the inclusion uh, group, uh, we need to discuss uh, should there be should there be a broader conversation to decide does it does this workshop stand alone or uh, uh, okay that's something that was covered by the previous uh, part uh, uh, concerning the data track uh, we uh, we are in su support for for this uh, proposal by the uh, colleagues from the, from data track evaluation group uh, as they suggested that the workshop two to nine. Uh, could be candidate for the main session uh, for, for the data track, uh, but also uh, maybe to, uh, uh, to draw some uh, insights and questions that uh, design the sessions to be inclusive and draw in other topics as well. Uh, concerning high level pen and uh, uh, roadmap, uh, we uh, see it uh, as a valuable uh, part for the main sessions, especially 5A and B part of the recommendations. Um, there is a need to look at the content of the merging session issues, main sessions content, uh, as they may already be included in the other main sessions. Okay. Uh, uh, we are in support for having a uh, main session for the NAMI coalition and uh, NRI as well. And uh, uh, concerning the introductory and concluding sessions, we are uh, in support for a continuation of these two sessions uh, with some in innovations by facilitators uh, in sense of uh, enhancing uh, in, um, um, in interaction. And we would advise uh, trying not to, to have overlap uh, in, in schedule uh, of main sessions and other important sessions. Uh, I think uh, that was the case uh, last year uh, when, uh, and I think it was, it was more um, uh, about the um, introductory and concluding sessions that this overlap uh, should be avoided if possible, but because I think someone mentioned that year, last year we had overlap with the uh, NRI main session and some uh, introductory uh, session. Um, 
and uh, uh, breakout discussion can be done on language uh, groupings. So if if it's possible, of course, maybe it would enhance the participation. Mm. Uh, then uh, concerning opening and closing, uh, of course, UN is in charge for this part. Uh, we would support, of course, to, to keep it as interesting uh, uh, as possible. Uh, and if, if, if possible, we would uh, appreciate if, if UN can share the agenda uh, with Mark beforehand. Um, and and uh, if, if possible, of course, uh, that uh, UN Secretary General to appear live and not pre-recorded to, to address the audience, if possible, of course. And uh, we are in support for a continuation of the open mic session uh, and sessions. Um, and maybe, uh, maybe organize uh, some, some kind of uh, a uh, call for, for open mic questions or something like that to, to uh, involve the uh, audience as much as possible. And concerning the next, ne next step, uh, steps for working on main session planning, uh, we, uh, we think that uh, we should be having as many groups uh, for the preparatory work uh, as uh, there are main sessions accommodated in the program. Uh, and to use the um, uh, methodology we used previous year. So um, uh, invite volunteers for facilitators for uh, each main sessions and, uh, and uh, colleagues who would like to join for further development. And uh, we would stress uh, importance maybe more than ever <laughs> before. Uh, to uh, to have all MAG members involved in facilitations and or moderations uh, of the main sessions. We said at least one, but of course it depends on, on uh, each MAG member. And uh, also call for volunteers to facilitate uh, each, uh, se each main session uh, preparatory process. Um, with a limit on the number of main sessions, each MAG member can effectively participate in facilitating. And we would, uh, uh, we find uh, uh, important to, uh, to uh, advise all sessions to cover the part uh, uh, on responding to pandemics. Uh, so, all organizers uh, to consider the pandemic in the way they plan uh, the questions to be covered. Uh, and um, I mentioned that before, thinking we're thinking on how to enhance interactivity. So having uh, some open online documents for gathering the input for the community or pre-recorded questions, uh, input for questions or, or something like that. Uh, and maybe pre-recorded answers if in, in, in any way try to enhance this interactivity. And um, uh, we could not agree on the uh, precise duration of the main sessions uh, as Neighbor Shay and Titi who, who were uh, in our group. Uh, it was somewhere between 90 and 112, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, and uh, this overlap uh, between main sessions and introductory and concluding sessions was, was uh, mentioned before. So that would be all from, from my part and uh, I uh, invite my colleagues to, to jump in and cover the parts that maybe I missed. Or Thanks very much for your report, Natasha. Um, does anyone else from Natasha's group want to add? Um, are there any questions for this group? I cannot see the speaker's queue right now. Um, 
but if you've requested the floor, please just go ahead. And Mary, go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman, for, <laughs> Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, uh, Natasha uh, mentioned my name uh, if I'm going to speak on uh, opening the newcomer session. No, I was just making a comment that um, yeah, that um, um, the, we should separate um, opening and closing from the topping and telling session of the thematic uh, groups. So it wasn't, uh, it has, has nothing to do with newcomers session. It was just an information that last year we, did, we didn't do well on it. And I'm not sure we want to do that this year. Thank you. I think, Mary, is that the same point Nebosha made earlier, that we need to be clear that opening and closing are um, sessions that apply to the IGF as a whole, whereas introductory and concluding or topping and tailing applies to a thematic track. Jennifer. That's right. That, that's right. Uh, it's just what I wanted to clear that. Yes, I that think Mary Nebosha made that point earlier. Yeah. So I think we all understand the difference. Well, I hope we all understand the difference. For new MAG members, let me just be very clear. So um, for, especially I know some of you haven't been to the Global IGF. There's usually a formal opening session um, for the whole IGF. And then there's also a closing session. Um, um, but for the thematic tracks, what, what the MAG did last year, which worked well, was to, to organize an introductory session on the theme. So on data, on trust, environment, inclusion, and then also a concluding um, um, session on that theme. So those, those are, that's the difference. Uh, so we're not talking about opening and closing of the IGF. We're talking about introduction and conclusion per thematic track. Um, Jennifer, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I'm Jennifer Chung, third year MAC member of private sector. I want to thank uh, Group 4 and also all the groups for presenting the report. Um, I wanted to pick up on one point that I think Group 4 mentioned and the others did not, was regarding the breakout sessions. I think possibly you were mentioning it was for the introductory sessions, that breakout sessions could be done in language groupings. I if I recall correctly, I think last year in Berlin, this was done. I unfortunately could not attend them in person, but um, just to flag that if we do that, assuming we use Zoom and not other platforms, breakout sessions um, could, breakout sessions are determined by host. So it will either be random or it will be assigned. And if we were to look at language groupings, we would have to ask attendees to indicate next to their name, the language they speak. And then, you know, we look at it that way. So I just wanted to flag this for us, the technical uh, possibilities and logistic possibilities if we are looking to do that. And then also uh, breakout sessions in Zoom are not recorded uh, unless we have the host um, in that particular breakout room. So I guess this is more for the dedicated group to look at when we're looking at the physical to virtual conversion. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that, Jennifer. Um, anyone else with, with comments specifically on Group 4's report um, before we go into a general discussion? I don't see anyone. So thanks very much for the group. Um, these were really rich reports and um, we will be summarizing these reports because these reports contain input that we need, not just for today, but for the coming weeks. So just to conclude this or take us into our general discussion, um, we've got um, uh, a few minutes left, 20 minutes left. Um, can I ask Sam? Now, firstly, this is a good opportunity for me to thank Samantha Dickinson for, for having done daily summaries of the open consultation in the MAG meeting. Um, Sam 
is with us in the room. And um, she would really, by the way, like feedback from MAG members. If you have found her summaries, the daily summaries useful, then please tell her. And if you have comment on how that can be done better, please tell her. Personally, I have found them extremely useful. And so thanks very much for that, Sam. Sam, can you just put on screen or Secretariat um, the, do, the Google Doc that we've been using to summarize this discussion? I just want to highlight what I see as an emerging consensus and then where we have further issues to discuss. Thanks. We're just waiting for that document. Um, if you want, should I share it? Oh, it's coming, good. Thanks a lot. If you can just scroll down to where it says AE, AE is right at the bottom where I typed. Thanks, AE's proposed synthesis. A little bit higher up. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to try and um, uh, and and I've got some paper notes as well. Um, but just have a look at this. So it seems to me that we have consensus on the idea of one track per theme. Although not everyone might have said it in so many words, um, we have consensus definitely on environment. Um, uh, but, and, and generally, it seems to me most people feel there should be a track um, per theme. What should be discussed still is the idea of using workshop 229 two, um, as the basis for the data track um, main session. So that's still, there's not consensus on that. That needs further thought. But, I've, but groups have made the proposal that that can be done in collaboration with the organizers, but there isn't consensus on that. So I'm just flagging that for further discussion. Then it seemed to me there's consensus that we use Roberto and Karim's proposal as a basis for the inclusion track main session. Um, and there's still a need and a desire amongst the MAG to talk more about the content and the framing of that, that main session but it seems that there's consensus that we can use that as the basis for the conclusion main session. Then in terms of additional main sessions, uh, I think we have consensus that we need a main session on the roadmap. And then we also have consensus on the NRI uh, main session on, on, on post-pandemic context and on the, uh, sorry, on emergency situations and the dynamic coalition main session on the post um, pandemic context. There was a question which I'm now going to put to the BPF um, facilitators. Do the BPFs, are there any BPFs who at this point are wanting to propose a main session? Sylvia, I've noted that you've asked for the floor. Can we just hear from the BPFs? Ben, um, Titi, Maria Paz, Chennai. Um, Carlos, Hello. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I think that the BPF on cybersecurity had been expecting to hold a session um, so that it could discuss its report and in, invite any feedback and, and raise visibility of the work um, done this year. Um, but we hadn't expected that to be a main session. I don't know if that answers your question. I, I think it would still be uh, helpful to have some kind of session for the BPF, but it, I, I don't feel it needs to have the prominence or the uh, additional length of being a main session. Um, separately, I'm happy to look for ways, I think we talked back in January um, about how can you better integrate the work of the BPS into the, um, the annual meeting and um, I'd be happy to look at ways in which it might work to uh, integrate the work or, or have a, a representative of the work talk during the introductory session for the trust track or during during a relevant um, main session, but I uh, hadn't, hadn't considered it being a, a main session of its own. And I hope that yes. answers the question. Yes. I'll stop there. Uh, Carlos, yes, go ahead. Yes, Thanks, yes. Ben. Thank you. Uh, 
the I think that uh, I agree with Ben on this. this uh, in in the Berlin IGF, we had a good session, which was not a main session, and worked very well. I, unless I am mistaken, I don't see a need for BPFs, uh, individual BPFs doing main sessions. So I don't know. Yeah, I agree with Ben that this it might be, but. Uh, well, if I think we by now like, you, might, you would have known. So yeah, yeah. If we do like yeah. uh, we did in two thousand nineteen, it would yeah. be fine. Yeah. So right. that's fine. And PT. I have a question, and that when you are talking about having a BPF main session, are you talking about having one main session for all BPF? Because uh, I I am quite agree with Ben and Carlos because we had a good discussion last year. So and the objective of the BPF is try to collect the input. So for us, uh, I think it's not so needed to have a main session. Um, also because uh, having a main session, we should have uh, uh, maybe uh, one for all BPF, and uh, the number of main session will increase uh, a lot. So maybe it would be better try to connect more uh, the BBF with the other session that are dealing with the same uh, theme, uh, but not having a, a main session for, for the BBF. I, so, yes, I, I agree with Titi, perhaps a main session, which would do uh, a report for each BPF and uh, all the four BPFs together. That would be okay, but... Uh, Otherwise, I don't see no, I, I think that this was just a question from some of the breakout groups. And I think you've answered it very clearly. And um, as Sylvia says, we need to add to our overall count of sessions, one per BPF, but these will not be main sessions. So um, I'm going to give Sylvia and Maria Paz the floor just now, but I just want to give a count. So we've got at the moment, from what I can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, main session ideas on which we have consensus. I think this matches well um, the ceiling. I think some groups said no more than eight, and another group said 10 maximum. Um, so I think this gives us a very reasonable foundation to start with. I think what we need to discuss, so flagging for discussion, Data needs a bit of further discussion. Um, it doesn't have to be now, it can happen um, subsequent to this meeting. The inclusion uh, track, we've got consensus, but we will discuss the content. The newcomer session, um, we might want to discuss that a bit more. Um, um, good idea, I think, to work with the, the dynamic coalition on schools on internet governance um, to, to work on that. Um, you know, and we also need to also, we need to think about, I'm, I'm not sure what the plans are for youth, um, for youth sessions. And um, what I felt there wasn't consensus on is the idea of an emerging issues um, main session. I think there's consensus that people felt the ISAC proposal um, at the moment can work better in a different format. Um, but there was one group that suggested maybe there should be an emerging issues main session um, organized by the MAG. Um, so that's still open for discussion. So um, I know we had a lot of other input um, about the virtual IGF, about length of sessions, um, but what I'd like us to discuss now so that we can actually make a decision are just the number of main sessions and the basic um, topics of these, um, these main sessions. So I'm opening the floor. Maria Paz asked quite a while ago. So Maria Paz, you go first. Sylvia, uh, I assume you've removed yourself. Um, if not, tell me. So we'll have Maria Paz and then Tamea and then Ben. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry that I'm experiencing technical issues in this end. My, my electricity just went off. So I'm running in my phone now for keeping connected in the in the meeting um, um, my comment is directed to the, the question that you posed uh, for the BPF. Uh, I agree with my colleagues from the other BPFs that the, the regular plan that we have so far is to uh, have one uh, session for the BPF in which we will address the, the work of the year and, and um, 
and dealt on the conclusion of our uh, findings. Uh, but I also I want to remind that in the uh, first day of the open consultation there uh, was from the community uh, a particular request that there was some specific intents uh, to talk about uh, women uh, and, and gender issues in general um, uh, in a more overall way in the IGF. So only want to represent that if uh, in some point uh, the rest of the MAC agree that this could be a relevant topic for the, one of the remaining slots for main session, uh, from what we heard in the open consultation, there is an appetite from the community to touch on that. Of course, that we need to take care that it's not duplicative with whatever we are discussing in the VPF session, but I think that it's something that it worth to have into consideration as a potential topic for the uh, main session. Thank you. Thanks very much for that. And thanks for pointing out that I forgot about that. So uh, uh, if we didn't put that in the summary. So thanks, Maria Paz. And thanks to Sam for capturing that. Yes, we do need to discuss that. So maybe, um, yeah, we'll come back and just flag that for discussion. Tamea, you have the floor next. Thank you, Henriette. Hello, everyone. Um, just uh, to be very brief, um, as you cautioned that we are talking about the number of sessions and not how to turn the IGF virtual. Um, but I wanted just to make um, a point that, that relates to both topics. And uh, especially when we're discussing main sessions for BPFs um, and others, um, I want to keep uh, all of us um, alert to the fact that, that going virtual also gives us a unique opportunity um, to, to preserve some of our work for the future and, um, and use this um, this setting that everything is virtual um, and that we are hugely moving to video and online content um, as an opportunity to to keep some of this for the future. Um, and I mean here, if we are thinking about BPFs or others reporting back for their from their yearly work, um, if we are work talking about having newcomer sessions, if we are talking about all this content that is very much already done and then needs to be discussed for Q&A, if we can have something engaging, um, more colorful, more um, um, just viewable, um, I think that would be very helpful for all of us to then use for um, future promotion of the IGF and the great work that is being done here. So I would encourage all of you who, who are part of DCs and Arise, BPFs, um, uh, any other sessions um, where you feel that you, you want to report back to the community to, to all of us to put our heads together and think about how we can how we can do that in a format that that can be pre recorded and put to the put to the community, um, but also that lives longer than just this year's IGF. Um, the German hosts I know they put a lot of resources into this last year and they did very nice promo videos for what the IGF is, how certain processes work, what can be found there. If we can build on that model and, and, and think about these, these things um, for the future, I think that would be a really interesting idea. And then it would give more, more time for the individual BPF sessions to really go into discussions and get feedback, but not have to repeat the same thing uh, over again. So I'm just putting that out there um, in a way to save time away from having sessions um, for everything in live and also to preserve our work a little bit. Thanks, Tamir. It's really, and you know, you make me think that, that when we're talking about the thematic track introductory and concluding sessions, maybe we need to think about preparatory sessions rather than introductory sessions. You know, it might even be possible for us to make them a little bit more um, because the virtual um, form allows us to be more creative and interactive. So thanks for that. And Ben, you are next. Um, thank you. So it's very helpful to have um, kind of a draft ideas on the screen for us to respond to. And thanks to you and, and to Sam for that. And so looking at, at the list of seven as a preliminary list for discussion, I just wanted to say uh, two things. One, um, a, B, a main session about the roadmap, I think, should be focused um, specifically on recommendations 5A and B about digital cooperation architecture and uh, hopefully about an IGF plus as the route forward. Um, there is so much in that roadmap from, um, that I don't think it 
makes sense to to try and have a um, a main session that covers AI and connectivity and human rights and et cetera, et cetera. So I think the the particular value and, and relevance um, for the IGF is to discuss what the IGF community thinks um, an IGF plus could look like and, and how we get there. Um, so I wanted to narrow that um, just in case there was a, an idea that a, a main session on the roadmap would, would cover the roadmap as a whole. Um, and my other question maybe or point was that uh, I'm, I'm happy to see one main session per track. I, I think that has consistency with the approach of the program this year. Um, but I, I also like the idea um, that people can sign up and volunteer to lead a main session so that it shouldn't necessarily fall to the coordinators of those four tracks to then produce the main session of those um, four tracks. It, it should be for other members of the MAG to be able to step forward and um, take on a, a leadership role. Thanks. Thanks for that, Ben. Yes, there was consensus I saw from, from all the groups on how to proceed. Everyone agreed that there should be working groups, and my sense is that you know most people felt that MAG members should be able to volunteer for working groups and could be in more than one working group. And I don't think we should decide on the facilitators now. You know, we, we, we can start the process after this meeting of getting the volunteers on track, and then, and then we can address the issue of who should facilitate them. Any other comments on that? And Ben, by the way, yes, you're absolutely right. We should be more explicit. The main session on the roadmap would not be on the entire roadmap, but on those uh, issues that are particularly relevant to, to the IGF. Does anybody have any comments on that or reactions to Ben's input on that or any other requests for the floor? Nebuchadnezzar speaking, just uh, briefly, uh, Natasha mentioned that in the group four we discussed the, this uh, uh, roadmap and that, that we specifically mentioned that it should be uh, about uh, Article 5AB, uh, those uh, are the most relevant for IGF and uh, IGF Plus, uh, so I, I think that's in uh, what, what Ben also wanted to to. to, to it is, it is. And in fact, Sam, if you don't mind, if you can just put that um, next to um, main session five on the roadmap, just to make a note that we're talking here about the architecture um, for digital cooperation, not everything. That's recommendation um, five, Andy. Um, Yuta, go ahead, please. Thank you, Henriette, for giving me the floor. I just wanted to come back to the question uh, on these um, sessions for the four thematic tracks. I, I do think it would be very beneficial to have a um, consistent program that is also where these main sessions are somehow complementary uh, to each other and also to the workshops and the issues and themes that are addressed in the sessions within the uh, track. So as I said yesterday, I do think it beneficial to uh, encourage MAC members to have a look at those workshop proposals that are now uh, per provisionally accepted for the program in that uh, themes uh, that they have not been assessing uh, in the first place. So just to get, uh, for all MAG members to get a good overview on what these sessions that we've been dosing, uh, discussing uh, yesterday uh, are really addressing. Some have, have a title where you can assume, or maybe I know what it's about. Others have a title where you really need to look into the uh, uh, workshop pr proposal and description to better understand what it's dealing about. And then I do think if we have that in mind and then decide what these um, main sessions for the four thematic tracks, uh, tracks will really address, that would be useful. Thank you. Thanks, um, uh, Jutta. Can we note that Secretariat, I mean, to me it sounds as if you are making that as a proposal for a first activity for the working groups that will be working on, 
on the main sessions that they need to look at the workshop proposals uh, in that track for that track yeah i thought it if we can find the time and i do know that we all are very busy in these days but still i do think it's uh it helps better understand what the whole track is about if you have a look uh at first to look at the proposals that are now uh suggested to be accepted into the program so that the main sessions uh, reflect on the workshops the workshops reflect on the main sessions and it comes somehow together that was my suggestion thank you thanks very much Uta. so to bring this to a close i'm just checking the agenda so am i can i assume you do let me ask you do we have consensus on these seven main session proposals you can use your, um, those of you that are in Zoom, you can use your yes function in your, your um, the list of participants. Or people can just speak up. Or use the chat. Sylvia has a hand up. Sylvia, please, please speak. Thank you, Henriette. Um, I just uh, wanted to refer to the guidelines because it, it, at the risk of sounding as a broken record and noting that uh, you have mentioned that every MAG has you know, the opportunity to change processes and everything. Um, I, I think that uh, there was a very um, thorough effort in, in the last maybe three years to list like what are those requirements? Is some some of the um, things that Juta just said are on the guidelines. Like for example, that a main session should not take uh, the attention or uh, duplicate, let's say, what a workshop proposal is actually doing. So going back to the list of the sessions under a specific track um, is important to make sure that either the, those sessions are referenced as part of the document that puts together the proposal. They don't have to be uh, mentioned on the microphone, right? But there are documents and reports that, that will come out of that. Um, if, if that's the case, to draw on speakers that were invited for other uh, workshops to bring those issues to a main session if that is appropriate. But, uh, really not to repeat or or take the the thunder let's say out of out of the the sessions that were proposed and um there was also an effort to try and um respond to the demands from the community and the consistent uh, input that we have received about uh have going into in-depth uh discussions um to make sure that the topics that are chosen for main sessions actually facilitate that opportunity to deep dive into uh, a particular issue of concern um, for the internet as as we uh, you know leave it nowadays so just to make sure that it's not a very generic uh, overview thing where uh, there is no um, chances to learn something new for example for people that um, have attended the the IGF in, in previous uh, opportunities and to use the pre-session report uh, the uh, format that the Secretariat has also advanced over the, the, the years that the MAG has uh, kind, you know, put some effort into it to make sure that those uh, mechanisms are used to reach out to the community and know we are not going to talk about everything under the sun. Is, is this Thing that will uh, help us uh, dive deep dive into the issues that are of concern um, is limited time and even more so if we cut uh, another half an hour or so if, if, if we end up with uh, not two hours um, but uh, 90 minutes for example um, if, if it is a very broad issue then then it will be very difficult to to achieve that uh, um, that demand that request uh, from the community to to give the opportunity to really go in depth into into discussions um, on the introductory and the 
in the concluding sessions that we have um, discussed, I, I think it might be a good idea uh, from the groups that have the, the, the workshop evaluation group, uh, and there was a couple of other groups that work on those documents to bring some context into this, uh, also to avoid uh, repetition. And um, it is there, when you look at all of those sessions, um, there is a lot of work ahead. So it's very important that the MAG also realizes uh, the burden for the people that are uh, volunteering for that. And um, it's, it's important to spread the, spread the load um, and, and get more actively involved, especially as all of these new demands for a virtual event will mean, for example, to uh, be checking on video interventions and and checking on the quality of one thing and the other and it's not just sending emails and, and figure out oh, we are going to get together 15 minutes earlier as, as June mentioned uh, before so there is a lot more work that will be needed and uh, it will be it will be good um, to to just make sure that we are all uh, putting our hand up uh, and helping uh, on the road ahead Thanks. Thanks, Sylvia. And um, just so I think clearly we need the first task is to to for the for the, for the 2020 MAG to look yeah. at the guidelines oh. developed by the 2019 okay. MAG. Okay. And assess yeah, yeah, whether yeah. you yeah. want to work with those and where there are changes and also whether they need to be changed in the light of it being a virtual IGF. So I think that's an activity. That, that the whole MAG needs to, to do over the next week. So if the Secretariat can perhaps, um, you know, post a writable version of, of those guidelines so that we can all comment on them and, and then adopt them for our 2020 work with changes where needed. And then I have a question. Um, did the same groups last year that, that, that prepared um, well, um, the main sessions per track, because they were more or less, did they also prepare the introductory and concluding sessions for the theme? So, so my, and, and I think the configuration might be a little bit different. So my question is, do we need two sets of groups? Um, one um, group per main session that will prepare that main session, and then do we also need people who will uh, prepare the introductory and concluding sessions for the thematic tracks? Or will the same groups do both main sessions and introductory and concluding sessions? So this is a question to the MAG. Sylvia and Maria Paz, um, can you respond? First, Maria Paz, then Sylvia. Yeah, uh, to the question. Thank you. This is Maria Paz Canales for the record, a MAG member from Gulag Civil Society. Um, yes, the groups are different, as uh, other colleagues are pointed out in the list, and, and also the groups are different between the different groups. <laughs> Usually what we have done in the past is like we do a group of volunteers uh, for organizing each specific thematic session. Uh, uh, last year, we self-identified during the open consultation meeting in Berlin, uh, which one of the main sessions we will be interested to support in the organization. And in the case of the uh, topping and, uh, and tailing or uh, intro uh, introductory and concluding session, uh, we identify later. In general, what, what has been natural is that someone from the thematic track lead the organization of those because those are uh, linked with the thematic tracks. Uh, but it's, uh, as uh, has been mentioned in some of the report, it's very intensive labor, the organization of the uh, introductory and, and concluding session. Uh, if we consider the breakout groups, we, we need uh, more members uh, to be, more MAG members to be engaged or recruit additional support from some of the organizers or other organization outside the, the, the MAG uh, IGF. So, but those are all different groups at the end. Uh, it's not, never, it's the same, exactly the same group. Thanks very much for confirming that. And thanks to everyone, um, June, Tamea, and everyone who responded in the chat. So um, we need to, as a next step, um, convene two sets of working groups 
um, one to work on main sessions and one to work on concluding and introductory sessions for the four tracks. Ben, you have the floor. Thank you. So, yeah, that was pretty much what I was going to say. Um, for, for the tracks, in January, um, thematic working groups were set up that people could contribute to the development of the narratives. So those were self-selecting and MAG members could be in more than one. And some MAG members, I guess, weren't, weren't in any. And then this last month, we've had the evaluation groups for each track, which were not self-selecting and each MAG member was involved in one and only one. Um, so we could revert back to the thematic working. There are two, so there are, each track has, has two different mailing lists and we could choose one or the other. Um, the, what, what is helpful is that um, the facilitators for each of those tracks are the same, whether it's the groups back in January or the ones from the last month. Thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot for that, Ben. Um, we, we, just before we close, we're running a little bit late, but um, one of our observers has a proposal for how to approach the newcomers um, session. So Mary, can you take the floor please and just make your proposal that you made in the chat so that everyone can hear it. Yes, thanks. Thank you a lot, Andriette. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Youth Coalition on Internet Governance Dynamic Coalition, I would like to make this proposal of uh, hosting the new conversation ourselves and in collaboration with other youth organizations and maybe other DCs interested in making this session happen. Uh, we believe that uh, the YCIG community has already enough experience of expertise uh, and we are youth and we would like to uh, have this chance to guide the newcomers with their first touch in the ecosystem. And as this year IGF is going to be online, uh, we believe that this, this can be um, not only in the form of one session, but uh, it can be organized in a format of several sessions prior to IGF so that everyone is already informed about uh, what IGF is and um, how they can get more involved. So it is not so overwhelming for people coming to the IGF for the first time. Uh, and uh, also we are in contact with the Secretariat and the host country with regards to the youth track, uh, the fate of which is unknown at the moment, but we have um, a meeting scheduled with them uh, for next week. And hopefully uh, we can combine maybe the new conversation with the youth track and make this happen. So this was uh, my proposal. Thank you a lot for giving me the floor. Thanks very much for that, Mary. So, so, so we have two proposals for the newcomers um, se um, session. One um, suggestion that it's organized by the schools on internet governance, and another that it's organized by um, the, 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 youth, um, the youth coalition. So um, it's time for a break. Um, I think we just need a short little break before we, we conclude our meeting. Um, I think I'd like you to, we'll, we'll, you'll break randomly, but I think what would be useful in, in, in the breaks uh, is if, if people can just confirm what we have got consensus on. So please discuss this, this idea of the main sessions, the seven that we have on the table, um, and, um, and, and if, there's, if there's any other types of main sessions, we've got consensus also that we need a newcomer session. And maybe you can discuss that a little bit, how you think we should um, approach the newcomers session. So, um, so I, I, you're probably more in the mood for a work-oriented break than a social break. But if anybody wants to have social interaction in the break, that's fine. But I think what would be very useful for me is if the breakout groups um, can, can just consolidate that we have a common understanding of what our decision is on main sessions and on what our next steps are. And then we can um, come back and, and agree on that. So um, Louise, please break us into our groups um, for 15 minutes. Sure, thank you, Andreas Willow. 
Thanks a lot. See you all again soon.
interesting observation when we are in a breakout groups in a small groups like so many people activate their cameras now we're back and everyone <laughs> on the camera yes and i'm hiding again my breakout my breakout was cut in the middle of my very momentous and important speech <laughs> <laughs> but we caught the main point carlos great ideas yeah okay thank you <laughs> carlos you can finish your speech now <laughs> No, it's okay, fine. <laughs> See, if you only got it, it's okay. <laughs> we like to learn from you, Carlos. So welcome back, everyone. Did you have good groups? Yes, sure. Yeah. <laughs> very good, very Always. The best. Very good, it was really interesting. <laughs> Uh, in our group, uh, some of us said that all our breakout groups have been good. And mm -hmm. that can only mean one thing, that everyone in this meeting is a very interesting person to <laughs> interact with, because you can never go wrong. Whatever breakout group you are in, they are interesting people and nice people. Yeah, we are interesting persons. I hope we don't turn out to be persons of interest. <laughs> <laughs> Not persons of the internet, persons of <laughs> Okay, you are on Netflix then. What? <laughs> That's a good one. I think what's so nice about the breakouts is that it's, it's Louise does all the work. We don't have to do any work. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. welcome back, everyone. It's like... We are very near the end of our meeting. Um, I have just asked Shangatai if he can, because I, I, I think you are tired of my voice and I am tired of my voice. So, um, Shangatai, if no, you No, I know. Just... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. You yes. have a wonderful way of speaking English. <laughs> I always told you that. So please keep, keep talking. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not going to comment on that, but thank you. Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> I think we just really need to, to summarize what we've achieved and then we can have a, 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 you know, a little bit of general discussion about next steps. Um, it seems that, you know, from what I can gather from this morning, we've got consensus on these seven main sessions. There's still work to be done on what goes into those main sessions and um, what they focus on. Um, and that will be done by the volunteer groups. We're going to look at the guidelines that were developed last year for main sessions. We'll review them and adopt them if, with changes if necessary. Um, timing of the main sessions, it seems that there's a, there's a concern about not making them too long, but they also can't be too short. Um, in my breakout group, we felt that 90 minutes was a good, a good period. But I think we can come back to that. But we've got consensus, and I think most people seem to feel excited about these seven main sessions. We've also got to agree that, that um, coming out of this meeting, we need uh, groups, volunteer groups, that will work on organizing the main sessions, and we'll need groups that will organize the introductory and concluding sessions. We've got proposals on the table for how to deal with the newcomers session. So if we have any more uh, time, perhaps we can discuss that. Um, so I think we've, we've, we've basically concluded our work um, uh, at this point um, um, with regard to, to the main sessions. Um, there's a lot of work ahead, particularly if we follow the guidelines um, in terms of uh, uh, preparing the input papers. Um, but that's what we'll do in the, in the coming weeks. Um, can we close on this main session discussion? Does anybody feel we need to do anything more? Um, um, the next step, um, Shangatai, do you want to just reiterate what you think the next steps will be? And perhaps explain to all the MAG members how the Secretariat, Secretariat will go about convening these voluntary working groups to organize the main sessions um, and then the second set of groups to work on preparing the introductory and concluding sessions.
Yes, hello, can you hear me? Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties here, so I, I won't switch on my camera. Um, <clears throat> okay, great. So for the, um, I'll, I'll start off with what you suggested, um, convening the, um, the two groupings. So I think the best way of doing it is just to set up a Google Doc, which um, the mag can come in and just add their names to, to which group they, were, they want to be in. And then we can see whether or not we have a balanced uh, groupings, because of course we don't want to have one group with two people and another group with uh, 20 people. So uh, that will be done after this meeting. Um, if not today, definitely by Monday, and we'll send that out to you. Um, <clears throat> we have also said that we will, we are going to have a another virtual mag meeting. This is just to follow up, um, not next week, but the week after next, and that's going to be on Tuesday. Um, and as far as the timeline goes, I don't know, Lewis, if you can um, put up the timeline document. Yes, uh, we've made changes to the timeline. So at the moment, we are here at uh, the second open consultations uh, and MAG meetings that 15th to 19th of um, June. That's where we are. And then, so after this, and I think according to the agenda items, we have completed the first selection of the workshops. And um, we, we, we have had a review of the idea of 2020. Uh, we did not review the day zero sessions, so that's fine. And then uh, we did have the discussion of the main sessions. So the next thing that we are going to do is this um, vetting process. So the Secretariat is going to um, contact the session organizers and ask them to resubmit their accepted session proposals with a plan on how to hold it online. Um, we will consult with the uh, workshop evaluation group just to make sure that um, we have all the elements um, there that is they think is pertinent, that, that it will be required. So hopefully we could send that out by, um, this is hopeful if everything goes according to plan, by the 24th of June and just give them two weeks uh, to submit. And then by the 8th of July, we will know um, which workshop organizers still want to hold the session because as you know, when the workshop proposals were submitted, um, it was with the idea that they would have um, a face-to-face -face meeting. And this is also goes with the open, um, open forums and the um, village booths. So basically everything. So we're gonna ask all the session organizers if they still want to hold their sessions um, virtually. And then we suppose that not everybody will and will have a reduction um, then of um, those sessions. And then after the 8th of July, we propose that we will have a, um, another virtual meeting, um, a MAG call on Tuesday, uh, 14th of July and that's at 11 UTC, and that's the 301. I think the originator of the idea was Jennifer, and we will d discuss the results of this um, second vetting process and come to the final decision of these, uh, the final, final selection of the workshops and the sessions. And, and then we can try and see how we're going to arrange them into a um, good virtual uh, program. Um, so be between then and now, of course, we are still going to continue to um, collect the ideas and have the discussion on the virtual IDF. And we can do this um, through the mailing list, have a document that um, connect, uh, collects all the good ideas and also with our next virtual call that which we're going to have in uh, two weeks time. 
um, we can also touch upon that. So those are the next steps so far. And of course, um, these uh, the mag, the magic working groups and the main session working groups are going to continue to work in their groups that um, have been set, set up. And I think that's it. I must be forgetting something, but I'm sure, Henriette, um, you'll fill that in. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Shangatai. Um, so our next milestone, in fact, is by 24 June to, to um, send out the announcement to the provisionally accepted session proposers and to invite them to resubmit um, with um, an explanation of how they will organize virtually. Um, and then um, I'm just making a note here. So um, I, I, I know there are people in the floor, so I'm just going to summarize what the work is that the MAG has to do in the short and medium term. We need to look, number one, so Secretariat, please, if you can just try to take note of this, we need to review the guidelines for main sessions from 2019. Secondly, we need to come up with criteria um, for the vetting of session proposers when we ask them to resubmit. So we need to have a little bit of a plan. As you said, the workshop evaluation group can do this. If they're willing to, they can speak for themselves um, or we can all work on it or we can have volunteers. Thirdly, we need to um, convene the main session organizing groups. And fourthly, we need to convene the, um, the, the working groups to do the introductory and concluding sessions. And then fifthly, that's just really a task that we'll undertake. What the Secretariat can do is to summarize all the suggestions that have been received for a virtual IGF, all the design and planning suggestions, those that are going on in the, ma in the MAG mailing list, as well as those that emerged from the MAG meeting, um, open consultation, but also from your breakout groups, you touched on, on um, suggestions for a virtual IGF. We'll summarize all of that and then try and compile that into some options for you to look at. So that when we have our next call, we actually give you some design options to consider so that we can make sooner rather than later a decision about whether we're having a two week long IGF or a one month IGF or, you know, et cetera. So um, that's really where I see us at the moment in terms of what needs to be done. And um, thanks very much for, for updating the timeline. Now I'm opening the floor. Nebosha, you are first. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have I have uh, one one um, remark. Let's say uh, I don't think that we agree that uh, seven is the uh, uh, final number of uh, main session, uh, but uh, just that these seven uh, are those that we agreed. Uh, but if we feel that it's necessary, that number can be uh, expanded. It can be enlarged. And the second thing is uh, one question, which uh, just uh, now, as I saw this uh, document, uh, 2020 timeline, uh, what about uh, uh, symbolism, heraldics of uh, this year's uh, IGF? Are we going to use uh, uh, Polish hosts? Uh, is that uh, uh, in a way uh, going to be changed or i mean it's 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 a formal but still a very important uh, important uh, question how we are going to uh, in that sense present uh, the this year's uh, igf I, I i believe there should be uh, some kind of reference to 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 current uh, situation and the fact that uh, this is uh, the very first uh, virtual IGF. If nothing else, I would add a small V in front of uh, this uh, IGF 2020 that looks so nice uh, on, on, on this. Uh, That's, it's a good point, Nebosha, and also a main theme, because I'm assuming that Poland wants to keep Internet United for 2021. 
So we might want to come up with some branding and also a main theme. So thanks. Then, then, then it comes to the main theme, Internet United, uh, uh, since uh, 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 such nice uh, uh, for this year, having in mind all this complex uh, situation that we have. So I, uh, I, in, uh, in a sense, if, if Polish uh, hosts uh, agree, I wouldn't change it. If, I think it's, uh, it, it really uh, paints a picture of uh, this year's situation. So thank and you. The, yeah, the Polish government has said that we can use um, the logo that they, they have designed because it is for IGF 2020. I mean, as you, as you can see, um, it takes the, the round for, for the zero, so it's mm -hmm. 2020. So That's they right. have basically allowed us uh, to use that. We've just, um, quickly just removed Poland and but we, we can do you know put a V or do something that makes sure that it emphasizes the digital nature of it. Um, they will, I, would, uh, I would suggest that we just uh, put a, a small V in front of uh, IGF uh, and uh, uh, keep this um, as, a, as a logo for this year's uh, IGF. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nikosha. Mm -hmm. um, those are great ideas. Um, and thanks for flagging um, that particular issue of branding and identity. Sylvia. Uh, thank you, Andriette. I um, will thanks, Nikosha, for your, your comment. I think it is uh, very relevant. Um, and I am um, happy to help with the, the modification of, of the design if, if I can get the, the final files. I can I can add it for you the same way I did the postcards a couple of years ago, um, and um, when with with the comment that I wanted to to make um, was that I think it would be best to include some basic information for the proposers about what it is or what it means to host or organize their sessions online. I don't think that they can go blindly to say, yes, we are good to go without knowing what that actually means. So I, I, I think it might be, um, although I understand that, uh, that um, you, Andrea, you want to collect input and uh, um, have an idea of how to incorporate all of these innovations and all of these, um, I think that um, it is it is going to be quite hard to to just raise your hand and say yes I'm going to do a, an online session that I have no idea what tool it is at what time it's going to happen so it's it's just a very too many unknowns for proposers to confirm straight away so I I would I would really I mentioned it on the the small group that the breakout group that we just had that um. Honestly, I, I feel that it would be really good that the Secretariat shares with us some of the progress that you guys have done with in regards to a virtual event planning. Uh, what are the resources that are available? And I think it would be more use, more productive use of the MARC uh, time to work on top of that, what, what it is that we can do with what you guys have and the resources that you have been able to pull together, uh, rather than just throwing ideas that might derail the whole conversation and, and uh, not happen, right? So it, I, don't, I don't think that that's a, that's a good use of our time, although I understand that it's good to discuss and how to be creative. Uh, you know, you, 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 can, you can be creative with a cake, but you still have, know that you have to have the eggs and the flour and the milk, right? So, you know, that, that's what's my, my comment. Thanks. And thanks, Sylvia. That, that is why we will give you some proposals. And I just want to clarify something about the session vetting process. In fact, looking at the timeline, and um, when we discuss it with the Secretariat, I think the vetting that we can do quickly um, is to ask the open forum and Deli Zero uh, um, proposers if they want to continue or not. I agree with you, actually, um, Sylvia. We can't rush the vetting of the workshops. So, uh, Shangata, I think we might want to segment this session's vetting process into two parts. One where we ask the non-workshop sessions if they want to go ahead, just so that we have an idea of numbers. 
and then we can look at um, what we want to, to, how we want to go about um, doing the second round of vetting, what method we want to use and what criteria, and also um, how much we tell people when we ask them to resubmit. So I agree with you, Sylvia, I don't think we can rush that. So it's possible that that 8th July timeline might need to be adjusted. Yeah. So, now we, we were going to go through the uh, working group on workshop evaluations. Um, but they haven't yet agreed to. Yes, they if they agree, else off. we do it to so, the whole. So let's give yeah, them yeah. a chance. Mm. Let's, we, mm. I don't want to put them on the spot now. They can talk amongst one another. And if they can come back to us next week on whether they're willing to take this on, or if they would like us to convene a new group um, to help with this. Um, so those are, those are important points. Thanks, Sylvia. Tamea. Thank you, Henriette. Um, Sylvia has said most of what I wanted to say, so I, I just will be brief, but bring in one element that, um, that I really want to underline here from what she said, is the fact that when we go to the organizers, be that for the workshops or for the other sessions, we give them a bit of a detail of what it means to organize a session online. And I know some of them might have really good experience with that, some might not. Um, and, and we just need to outline what that means. And also, what is it that we as the IGF, the Secretariat or the MAC can offer them in support? What, what does it mean to have, uh, you know, technical, what, what is the technical platform we are going to use? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's Zoom, but that needs to be communicated. Um, will they have moderators already? Will they have technical support uh, on, on hand? Um, will they have backgrounds? Will they need to have, um, you know, will they have time to get together with their, um, speakers and uh, be able to uh, just check connections and, and see if things are working, uh, who will be the rapporteur, uh, if, you know, all those things. I think we just need to have a quick thing before we get to, we go to them and say, oh, do we want to do this? Because I, I assume that everybody will say, sure, of course I want to, I want to be on the program. But I think we just need to be sure that they understand what this means and that they are, they know, they don't assume also what is what is given to them if we are not able to give that. Thank you. Completely agree. Very important. Paul, you are next. Uh, thank you, Henriette. Um, I just wanted to, um, just to, to um, uh, underline the value of lessons learned from other organizations. And I was just wanting wondering if through the, the Secretariat or other MAG members, if there's an effort to uh, look at what other organizations within the UN and outside the UN have done in terms of holding virtual meetings, because there are a number of examples. I'm thinking, for example, of ICANN, which had their March meeting uh, as a virtual meeting and will have their summer meeting as well. Um, I think that the experience of other organizations could offer us um, a lot of lessons of things to do or things not to do in terms of pretty much everything, scheduling, time zones, length of, of uh, sessions, uh, maybe even um, uh, what sort of criteria to put for organizers of sessions to ensure that they can put on a good virtual session. So uh, it's just to express the hope that we, are, we have the means to, I don't know, canvas these or other organizations or we're in touch with them about uh, their experiences and we can draw on that as we put together the virtual program. Uh, Paul, thanks very much for mentioning that. And in fact, Secretariat, let's add that to our list of follow-up actions. And um, Paul, we are already doing that. So we are in touch with these organizations. Um, and if the MAG wants, we could actually invite some of them to address the MAG. Um, because I think you, you're really right. It, it will make a big difference. And I think it could be, it could be good to hear them talk about, you know, to ask RightsCon, ask ICANN, ask CSTD um, to share some of their experiences. So very yes. good suggestion. Um, and I think we'll follow up. And possibly we can invite them to a mad call to, yeah. to give us. Yeah, uh, can I just add that? Yes, uh, we have spoken to ICANN, for instance, CSTD, definitely and other UNCTAD um, 
processes and we've spoken to Diplo amongst others. So, and we are going to continue to uh, talk to them and to other in institutions. But as Henriette says, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we're all scheduled with RightsCon mm -hmm. um, for, for next week. And then we can also get feedback from the, the Internet and Jurisdiction Project. I mean, I think this is a very, very useful thing to get their mm -hmm. input. And MAG members, if you have, I know Sylvia, you've sent, um, sent some experiences. Other MAG members, if you've been in events that you felt were really well managed, um, then let us know. And um, next, Amado, you have the floor. Thanks. Um, thank you very much. Um, well, my my recommendation, uh, Andriet um, Chengatai, is of course the people from ICANN. Uh, I think they have they have a certain level of skills in terms of managing technology, and that's why I am. Um, I would like to suggest to to the Mac if if it would be possible to ask the the, the participants of the workshops to pre-record their content in with one month in advance, in which we can give them the proper technical support. Uh, let's say four workshops every day, and they can. Uh, upload the, the results of their discussion and during the the uh, IPF we can have actually just a summary of what they already discussed during the during the workshop and everybody can go to address the the original material and maybe we can also invite the the open audience to attend these recording sessions in order for them to learn what the participants are trying to do but but it is i think it is very important to reduce the level of complexity in dealing with uh, a civil society 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 people who are not really skilled who have some issues with the power like today or with the connectivity and so on and i think that will diminish the quality of the event and, and we can, I think, prevent that if we pre-record it. And my, my suggestion is also that uh, instead of having the, the whole load of workshop during the, the event, we just have panels of uh, speakers representing each one of the workshops, reporting to the audience what happened in, in a format of a 15, 12 minutes participations, and, and then we can have in four days the, the whole summary, executive summary of, of the final discussions. And we can also intercalate the, these main sessions that, that we were discussing today about. And, and through this, maybe we can improve the probability of a successful event decrease the amount of technical work because as Tamia uh, was, was mentioned, it's, it's really complicated. Uh, I have been involved in several um, global events. It's really complicated, all those technical issues. And if we can see a way how to less the complexity and improve the quality and also allow everybody to participate in a uh, reasonable way, I think uh, we can have a successful meeting. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Amado. And please share, I think you've already, but also share those suggestions um, on the mailing list so that we can cap capture them from there as well. Um, I will. Um, Thank go, you. Sorry, Amado, did you want to respond? Yes, no, I, I will. Thank you. I, please, I, I will. Please. Thanks I will. very much. And um, Ben. You have Thank you, Ben. Yeah, Ben Wallace um, for the transcript. Um, it's a question um, ab about next steps. Um, and w obviously, we, we understand there's a division of labor um, with the MAG responsible for um, deciding which workshops should be approved and, and for working on most of the main sessions. And the Secretariat um, dealing with the open forums and the day zero sessions. Um, uh, and I know there's slightly different approaches as well for day zero. Um, it states 
on the website that they're allocated on a first come first serve basis and that takes into account space relevance uh, regional stakeholder balance um, so I wondered uh, what process the Secretariat's taking with the open forums and the day zero proposals are they also going to be asked to resubmit with a confirmation that they'll go virtual and are you expecting final decisions um, for day zeros and open forums in the same time frame which is I think this kind of um, the mag meeting will have on the 14th of July so yeah, I'm just curious to understand a bit more about um, how those two strands of the program are looking. Thanks. Um, ben, I can only answer part of that. And uh, that is that we will do two things. First, we'll ask them, do they still want to be considered in the light of the fact that it's a, a virtual IGF? And then once we know who still want to be considered, then we will also, as we are doing with other sessions, um, ask them to, to um, provide um, an, an explanation of how they would go about running it. So that, that we'll do once we have a sense of what the criteria is that the MAG would like us to, be, to apply to the second vetting process. So we won't rush that, but we feel that, that what we want to do sooner rather than later is just to give them the opportunity to withdraw their requests and in the light of the fact that it's a virtual IGF. So I can't answer that whole question at this point, but um, we will be um, able to at least give you a confirmation of, of the numbers um, and how those have changed as a result of it being a, a virtual IGF. Thank you. And I think that from the point of view, even though those aren't organized by the MAG, I think we still want to make sure that they are that they're successful sessions and that they are uh, organized and implemented and designed um, with the nature of the virtual medium um, taken into account. So I think we also do want them to, to resubmit um, their methodology at the very least. Um, next, we have Roberto Zambrana. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Just a quick response to your comment. I think we, uh, about the vetting process, I think we can ask the group. I will write a mail uh, very soon. So uh, in my, my first feeling is that we will not have uh, problems with uh, conducting that bidding, the bidding process. Um, of course, following what the secretariat criteria uh, are. That will be all, thank you. Thanks, Roberto. Veni. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please Great. Introduce yourself. Yeah, Veni Markowski, I can, MAG member. Um, I just, because uh, you mentioned several times uh, the meetings that I can organize, I just wanted to drive your attention to the fact that next week actually is uh, the I can uh, Kuala Lumpur meeting, and I call it Kuala Lumpur, but it will be <laughs> virtual. However, we'll be using the Kuala Lumpur time zone. So it might be useful for the MAG members to just uh, join uh, and uh, I'll put a link in the chat room in a bit uh, and just see how it goes because it will be fully virtual with interpretation, uh, multiple sessions, et cetera, et cetera. So it might be uh, helpful when uh, you're discussing what to do and how to do it. Thanks very much, Veni, and thanks for, for ICANN's willingness to be um, so supportive. We've already been in touch with, with ICANN staff, and um, they have really been very helpful. And thanks, of course, for the support for the captioning. I really do urge MAG members, if you haven't had a chance to participate in a big virtual event, next week's ICANN meeting is a very, very good opportunity for us. Um, I see that the floor is closed, <laughs> um, uh, or not closed, but I don't see anyone in the queue. So Secretariat, if you can just take us back to our agenda. Um, my sense is that we've come to the end of the meeting. Um, are there any other matters that, that any MAG member would like to put on the table at this point? I see no hands. 
and I see nothing in the chat. Um, so I think we can, um, can um, close our meeting. We've prepared a little evaluation um, for you, which Luis will put up. Um, so maybe now's the time to do that, and then um, we can fill in the poll and then come back and we'll formally close the meeting. Why, well, Min, if you are still with us, um, I would really like you to, to make some closing remarks and Shengatai, you as well. But let's fill in our poll now. Uh, yes, may I speak? Go ahead, go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, I was following what uh, Veni said about the ICON meeting, which will be, of course, very interesting. And uh, it will be uh, uh, interesting to see a meeting, a uh, very large meeting with a lot of participants, a lot of sessions, etc. But in which the a uh, multi-regional element is not uh, dominant. There is, uh, the ICON sessions do not require that uh, there is multi-regional participation in that, their diversity criteria. Not even multi-sectoral, they're flexible on that. So it's, despite this, it will be very interesting to follow the technology use, the way they use the, the, the monitoring, the, the, the the quality of the uh, operation, etc., will be interesting. But these elements have to be taken into account. Thanks, thanks a lot for that, Sarah. Um, I would like to, Louise. Thanks very much. You can end that one, and if you could then just put the poll up um, about the general um, feedback on the meeting, the one that we do, did previously just uh, uh, assesses whether people are positive um, or negative um, how they felt about the overall um, meeting so this is very useful I'm just going to go hello. through the what Louise are you there hello hello yes hello. I'm here I'm here hello this is Rudolf I'm hello does anybody hear Hi, Rudolf. Me? go no. ahead you want to speak? Oh, oh sorry I, I for, for 10 minutes I'm trying to to connect I'm sorry on that I only <laughs> voice uh, uh, voice my now. I, I wanted just to, just to, because we were at day zero, sorry, that was the moment where I wanted to interven intervene. Uh, because we had last year on day zero, this high level meeting with ministers and CEOs and representatives of all stakeholders. Um, just to be clear, because I had a request from my minister's office that this year there will no, be no such meeting on day zero. No virtual high level or whatever parliamentarians or so so forth meeting J just to just to make it clear um thanks for that rudolph i think i caught that um if i understood that correctly yes it will be very different this year Shengatai, can you respond to that Uh, yes, um, I, I think we'll, we will have to look at day zero a, a little bit differently. Do we want to, uh, if the question is, is there going to be a parliamentary session as such within the um, IGF meeting? Yes, I still think that there will be one. Uh, it may not necessarily be on the day zero, but we will try and incorporate it with the high level sessions because we still intend to have high level sessions. What do you mean by high level sessions? Um, high level sessions as we like ministerial or high level leader sessions that we've had in the past IGF meetings. Um, oh, okay, least, that, okay. Yeah. That, it's, it, oh, so that's on the agenda, but you don't yes. know when and because I need to, I need to block uh, some date. I mean, everybody probably needs to block the dates. So we need to be quite quick about uh, the, the possible date. 
Yes, exactly. But everything hangs in balance. And how, how long will the IGF be? Is, if, the, if the IGF is still in the one week period, then of course it's different if the IGF is going to be held over you know, a month period. So that has to be settled first is what's the length okay. of the IGF. And then we can see where we will go, going to be inserting the high level sessions. And, and host of, of such a high level leaders meeting will be somebody from it's, the UN? Yes, it's going to be the UN. It's going to be basically okay. the UN Secretariat. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry, so sorry for prolonging this, but it, sorry. No, no, no that's exactly fine. As long as it's clear. Yeah. And, and Rangatai, I mean, do you, do you, can you announce in any way when the decision will be made, whether it's a one-week IGF or a two-week or three weeks or whatsoever? Just because, as Rudolf said, it's very <coughs> necessary to block early these uh, uh, days so in your schedule. As the Secretariat, we are waiting for the advice of the MAG. Okay. What advice do you give? What length it is? Okay. And then we'll take I would it say from two there. weeks. <laughs> yeah. okay. We can so do a poll. Everyone, please, can I chair mm -hmm. the meeting? Um, mm -hmm. Let me just Sorry. reiterate, and then you can ask questions. Mm. So what I proposed is that we will summarize all the suggestions that you've made about design. We'll do that by the time our next MAG call takes place. And then when we do that next MAG call, we want to give you very concrete options so that at that call, and Shanghai will tell us what the date is, that you then decide whether this is a two-week IGF or a three-day or a four-day IGF. So Shegetai is correct. The MAG still needs to decide. You are still responsible for the overall design of the meeting. What we want to do is try and make it easier for you to decide by um, summarizing all the suggestions that are being made and then putting them in the form of options for you to consider. So I'm hoping, Jutta, in response to your question and Rudolf's question, that um, within two weeks, we can publicize dates and uh, data about how long and, and, and how this IGF will take place. Um, I think, um, uh, Shengitai, you might you know, correct me if you think I'm being over ambitious, but I'm hoping that we can make the decision within two weeks. Would that, uh, Jutta, Rudolf, would, would that work if we make this decision within two weeks? Uh, if I may skip in, I do think that also for the decision that uh, the workshop proposers need to take, whether they uh, will be able to run a virtual session at a virtual IGF, they might probably ask whether it will be in that week that was suggested to be in Katowice, or whether it's expanded before that time uh, or, be, or afterwards. So. I do think it's really necessary to come to a decision as soon as possible also to enable the workshop proposers to take their own decision, whether they accept their proposal and feel up to run it uh, during a virtual session. Some people might just have made plans for the week before or the week after the mm -hmm. traditional IGF would have taken place. I, I agree, we need to make it um, really soon, but you know, Shengatai and I discussed this and we think that many of you will be involved in the ICANN meeting next week. So we didn't okay. want to, to force this de decision to be made okay. next week, which would have been nice. Um, we'd rather give you all the experience and the time to participate in that meeting, those of you that do, I know not everyone does, and then we'll make the decision in the week after that. Um, okay. Um, Yuta, I would like to make it sooner, but I don't think it's realistic for us to, to make it any earlier than that. I, I, have, I have one comment. I, I, I think we, we would have to discuss uh, at our next meeting for a little while if we really want to do this high level segment virtually. I am not so convinced if it really makes sense because the merit of this kind of high level section was more than uh, in other formats of the IGF, the physical presence, the the getting together, the mingling. So I I really don't know if it if it really makes sense to have this. I I would rather prefer to mainstream these high level people into the actual program and try to allocate um, slots for parliamentarians, high level people from ministerial or or CEOs or whatever 
to the actual workshops or uh, main sessions rather than having a dedicated session. But, but I, I know that's not a discussion that we can have mm. now, but I just wanted to flag that I think we need to discuss this. I agree with you, Rudolf. And I think look, the, wh why Min can say more in his closing remarks about that, and I know there is planning for a UN-led high-level session, um, um, but I agree with you. We need to look at it and how it would impact on the rest of the program. So I think the other um, important thing, so thanks for tabling this here. And I know this is putting pressure on you and Dessa, but I do think that when the MAG has our next call, we would need to be able to look at a proposal for how the high level sessions are intended to work. Um, to, to, you know, to be able to, to understand in what way that's going to impact on the design of the IGF. So, um, it, it, can, um, it, can be, it can become quite complex. So I do think we need to be able to have a clearer understanding of that. But I think when Min, if when you make your closing remarks, um, if you can say, I know you, you spoke about this earlier this week, but it might be good for you to just refresh everyone's um, um, understanding of what your plans are for the high level sessions at this point. So anyone else who want to take the floor at this point? It's, uh, you know, it's, we don't have these meetings too often, so now is a, is a good time. Shang Attack, can you in the meantime remind us when our next call will be? Uh, Mr. Madam Chair, I would like to share my information with you. Please this go is ahead. Eric. Is that Atumani speaking? No, this is Mr. Eric. Oh, Eric, please go ahead. Uh, I don't know if I can introduce yourself for the record. Yeah, um, I don't know if I can speak in French. Um, Eric, I'm afraid we don't have an um, interpretation on hand. Um, if you're going to be very brief, you can speak. Yeah, very brief. It's a, it's a very and good information. Then someone else can can translate for you. But you'll have to keep it really very brief. Yes. Ok, donc je voulais dire, euh, pendant que nous tenions cette, euh, cette réunion du MAG, nous au Congo-Brazzaville, on a organisé le, la deuxième édition du IGF euh, national qui a commencé depuis hier et ça s'est terminé aujourd'hui. Donc c'est pour ça que vous ne m'avez pas vu hier en réunion parce que j'étais paneliste là-bas. Mais euh, la plus grande, l'information que je voulais vous partager ici, c'est que pour la première fois dans notre IGF Eric? national, si vous voulez poser un peu, on pourrait traduire la, la première partie et, et puis faire en, en pièce. It's Ben, for the record. Um, I'm happy to have a go. Um, so Eric was saying uh, he's been working on the Congo National IGF all week, which is why you haven't seen um, as much of him during the discussion. And then he was about to say something about um, the discussion this week. Uh, Eric, encore? Voilà, donc pour une première fois, pendant notre IGF, on a eu beaucoup de membres du gouvernement qui ont participé à, aux sessions. So, for the first time, um, they managed to get lots of government participants in, in the national IGF. Et nous avons eu beaucoup de parlementaires, beaucoup de VIP, beaucoup, même les membres de la Cour suprême ont participé aux sessions. And even uh, lots of members of parliament and lots of VIPs in the high level session, I think. Et maintenant, ils ont mesuré, ils ont touché du toit, ils ont compris la puissance de l'Internet. Et maintenant, ces high-level speakers ont compris la puissance de l'Internet. Et je sais que beaucoup de pays africains sont dans la même situation que nous, parce que cette situation a permis à notre pays de faire passer toutes les lois au niveau du Parlement, les lois sur la cybersécurité, la cybercriminalité, les transactions électroniques et la protection des données à caractère personnel, toutes ces lois ont été promulguées grâce à la participation à ce forum-là de, uh, de tous ces leaders. Um, encore une fois, Eric, je, je suis désolé. Tu vas sortir pour ça. Oh, sorry. Yeah, somebody else. No, I was trying to help also. This is Maria Bas. Yeah, they say that this situation provides them the opportunity to pass all the legislation related with cybersecurity, cybercrime, protect, uh, data protection. So all the relevant issues are connected with the internet. Voilà, donc toutes ces lois, toutes ces lois ont été votées 
grâce à cette situation-là du pandémie euh, euh, du COVID-19. Donc, ça a permis aux leaders de comprendre la puissance de l'Internet et de voter toutes ces lois-là. And so, um, all the laws have been voted yeah. on Maria, Maria Pass? Yeah, yeah, yes. So the, oh. Actually, can I ask, we have several French speakers in our meeting. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, if I can ask um, Lucien or um, Adama, or if there's Yeah, but else. I think it's basically that, that all the, the laws regarding this issue that you mentioned are being voted and approved right now. Voilà, parce qu'on a eu cette situation. Et donc, en fait, l'expérience que je voulais partager ici, c'est pour beaucoup de pays africains. Parce que je sais que dans beaucoup de pays africains, on a du mal à faire passer les lois. On a du mal à faire passer les lois. Ce qui fait qu'on a du mal à adhérer à la Convention de Budapest et à la Convention de l'Union africaine parce que les lois ne sont pas votées au Parlement. Thanks. Maria Paz, you go. I'm sorry, it was a little fast for me. I don't know if Lucien can come to the rescue. <laughs> okay, Lucien. Uh, yeah, you... I'm outside, so uh, I can help out. He said that uh, the number of laws that uh, in Africa are not voted fast enough, and the uh, IGF and having a direct link to the IPs basically allows for such uh, offense voting, and uh, it allows also to go for signing the Budapest Convention and also text at the original level. Thanks, Lucien. Donc, je, pour terminer, je voulais ici inviter euh, tous les pays qui, évidemment, ont, les mêmes qui ont eu le même problème que le Congo pour faire passer les lois, de profiter pendant cette période de crise, de pandémie, pour montrer au niveau du gouvernement l'importance de faire passer toutes les lois qui traînent encore sur les bureaux. So he's saying that uh, he invites all the countries to make uh, an opportunity of the, this emerging situation and, and make the governments aware of the relevance of passing all these laws. Parce que nous aujourd'hui, nous avons notre euh, cyber législation déjà CENI, donc et c'est grâce à cette crise que nous avons eu de pandémie de COVID-19 qui a accéléré évidemment l'adoption et l'adoption de toutes les lois au niveau du Parlement. Donc voilà ce que je voulais partager avec vous comme expérience. So he's saying that this uh, crisis of this pandemic has provided this opportunity, this unique opportunity to get these laws passed and have this conversation. And this is what he wants to uh, share today with us. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Maria Paz, and thanks very much, Eric. You know, Eric is a new MAG member and Eric has had a difficult, I've been in touch with Eric and Eric has had a very challenging year. So, um, Eric, thanks very much for, for participating in the meeting. And I think Eric's point speaks directly to this issue of high-level sessions. Yes, it will be complex to organize high-level sessions, but at the same time, there is an opportunity here um, that's generated as a result of the pandemic that governments who normally might not be that engaged are now engaged. So I think this is definitely something that, that, that needs to be considered. Um, I see there's an observer, or who's in the, there's, there's someone else in the speaking queue. Atumani, do you want to take the floor? Yes, yes, of course, uh, Madam Chair. Um, first, of, first of all, the, uh, I'd like to thank you for, for the, um, uh, the opportunity that you, you gave me to intervene uh, this time. And uh, I'd like to also to, to thank uh, all of uh, colleagues, uh, as uh, it's not easy uh, for newcomers to, to be really involved on, um, on the works. But uh, most of you, most of colleagues, uh, pay attention and uh, uh, can share experiences and uh, is something really valuable and uh, re really appreciated. So uh, I, I'd like to, to, to add another point uh, in, in the documentation of our, our processes, because we have a lot of things that uh, uh, usually uh, used, but um, in, in my own opinion, uh, it's quite difficult to find uh, in terms of uh, processes well documented. And uh, I, I'd like to volunteer if uh, we can uh, work with others. Uh, uh, I, 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 for, for example, for newcomer, we, we might take one year and plus to be really involved if we'd like to really follow what is what is done 
to learn and to be uh, mm. really embarked uh, on uh, what others are, are doing. And I'd like to um, apologize for uh, for the uh, in the process of workshop evaluation, the final step uh, during a couple of days because I could not really be involved because uh, honestly I, I was a little bit uh, lost on on the process. This is uh, my final comment on the uh, last couple of days, and thank you all, and thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, Karim. I see now it's you. Thanks very much for those comments, um, um, Karim. And, and, and thanks for volunteering also for, for helping with that. So we are now going to close our meeting. Um, no one else is jumping in. Thanks, Louise, for, for bringing that um, poll um, up. I think the feedback on this MAG meeting, I think this was feedback on this virtual MAG meeting, is re really largely positive. Um, and so just thanks to all of you. I think the fact that you were willing to, 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 to do this extraordinary thing of, of getting up early, staying up late, um, having working groups work in different times. And I think the other thing that has made this meeting a success is that, that you have prepared so well the, the working groups um, worked very well. I know not every working group um, had as many people as others. And of course, there's some people who weren't as active as others. Um, but others stepped in and showed leadership. So, so thanks really very, very much for that. I think something that some MAG members have brought to my attention, which I think it's important for us to consider, is that, that this MAG is, is quite unique in the sense that there are so few new MAG members. So um, thank you to the old MAG members um, for supporting the new MAG members, but also just a reminder to the older MAG members who've been here for a while, when we go forward as we prepare IGF 2020, is to be sensitive. Be sensitive to the fact that there are different languages, different levels of experience, um, and that we are still one MAG, even though some of us have been here for three years and, and some of them are still very new. Some of us are still new. So uh, I think you are managing that well, continue to manage it well, and just manage it with, with um, generosity and sensitivity and hard work. Um, so I want to, to, to um, give Waimin and Kwok from UNDESA an opportunity to say something, and then also Shangatai, and then I'll give my final thank you to everyone. Waimin. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Andrea. Um, this is Waimin Kwok from UN DESA. Um, I'm not actually uh, going to give like closing remarks, uh, more like my personal comments uh, or observation. Uh, first, I'd like to just to echo what Andrea just said to congratulate the, um, the, the MAG. Uh, I think it's a highly productive meeting, but that's not possible without very uh, passionate and, and and committed efforts of the MAC member and also the very effective chairing of Unread as the MAC chair. Uh, I, I enjoyed uh, listening. I was in and out other meetings, but uh, the way how the breakout groups discuss, come back together uh, with uh, very, very clear and concise recommendations like for the main sessions, I think this is, this is actually uh, very good. One, one observation, like I, I see now that we still have 67 participants online, uh, majority the MAC members. Um, Changatai can correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think this is like one of the highest number even on the, for the last day of, of a MAC meeting uh, compared to a fiscal meeting. So I, I would say that uh, the this virtual meeting is equally if not more productive than, uh, than a fiscal meeting. And I hope that we can actually see this, uh, this, this uh, positive outcome um, reflected in the upcoming uh, annual meeting, the virtual meeting in November. Um, the, also on the point that is discussed in the last 30 minutes or so about the high level sessions, uh, I think we, are, uh, we, we have to act very fast uh, together with uh, Changatai. Uh, we will see how we can actually come up with the structure that uh, taking into consideration all the comments made. Um, the question whether we have a day zero, how we can look at the, the synthesis of the high level session. High level, se high level sessions, if, 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 I, if I may just to uh, respond to Andrea's uh, comment to elaborate more. 
if we uh, just to recall the high level sessions that we have in Berlin that, that include the ministerial breakfast, then there's the high level leaders uh, track uh, and the opening session, the official opening, then the parliamentary session and the closing session. So these are the high level sessions and in some form uh, or, um, in, the past Mac, uh, in the past IGF meetings. So this will remain, but the purpose is of course, how we can get this to be integrated to the, to the full program. Um, to Rudolf comment, I'm, I'm certainly all for getting, getting a senior or high level participant in the main session. Uh, I, think, I think that has, we can see that uh, in the past main sessions, uh, those that have high level uh, participants normally are also, uh, are also more uh, are, are well attended. Um, the, the, I, Andriets mentioned that we have this plan to be announced in two weeks time. I think that is the most ideal. Uh, we will aim for that. If not, it will certainly be by uh, end of July. I, I think we have to uh, send out the message to all the digital ministers, to all the high level participants, including the heads of agencies, head, the head of UN agencies, um, intergovernmental and non-intergovernmental organizations that include heads of civil society, the CEO of industry. So all that should actually be done well before the, 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 uh, the summer break of, the, of the, all those countries in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, the, I would like to just to end here. Again, I, I, I would like to congratulate the, the MAC and the MAC chair. I think this is, uh, I look forward to see the report and, and I'm sure our director, Zhu Wang Zhu and Mr. Liu, uh, the USG will look forward to see the report. One, one, one comment I forget. Um, the, there was a request about uh, to see the notes from the USG to the Secretary General. Uh, the USG has not forgotten about this, just that that is the internal notes. So uh, he's actually preparing a letter uh, addressed to the MAC that will have the same content as the notes and that, should, that letter should come to the MAC very soon. Um, thank you. Thank you, Andre. Back to you. Thanks very much, um, Wai Min. And please convey our thanks to Mr. Liu for, for spending so much time with us um, during the second day of the open consultation. Um, Shengatai. Uh, thank you, Anwit. I'll be very quick. Um, I think the meeting went very, very, very well. And mm -hmm. thanks to the chair and also thanks to the MAG members and also members of the community. I think it was really interactive. And I think we're on good footing, at least for preparations for the um, virtual IGF. We did try a, a couple of new things, the polls and the breakout rooms, and I think those worked um, very well. So um, we're going to continue to improve on that. And we're also going to continue to listen to people who are holding their virtual meetings and try and incorporate the good things and also watch out for the things that they say that we should watch out for. Um, as for the next meeting, as next week is the um, ICANN meeting, we won't have the virtual meeting then, but the following week, uh, that Tuesday, that's the 30th of June at uh, 2000 hours UTC. That's uh, when we plan to have the next MAG virtual meeting. Um, the Secretariat will start immediately with the follow-up actions and um, we'll see you then. Thank you and have a good weekend. Thanks very much, Shengatai. And to the Secretariat, a massive thank you. They've really worked very hard. So to Lima and Anya and Luis and Shengatai, to the consultants, um, to Women Serena and to Sam, um, thanks very much for, for all your work during and before the meeting. And thank you to the captioners. Um, I really um, appreciate all the, the effort that they the silent effort that they, that they put into this. And again, to the facilitators and the rapporteurs and all the MAG members. And I want to give a very special thank you to Louise. You know, I think Louise has been navigating this so well and, and has been incredibly supportive. And, and I have felt very, as a chair, I have felt very supported by the Secretariat and very supported by Louise's um, technical presence and expertise. So thanks very much, everyone. And now let's give ourselves a very uh, big uh, applause. Um, we can wave or we can clap and then we can say goodbye to one another.
Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. 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 Bye Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Henriette. You can add. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone. Stay safe.